Good afternoon. My name is Wayne Drinkward, class of 1973, and the current chair of the Board of Trustees. And it's my privilege this afternoon to preside over the ceremony for the opening of the L. Michael Shanahan Center for Teaching and Learning. So welcome, everyone. But most of all, I want to say welcome to Mike and Mary Shanahan. First of all, this, this building would not be here without them in so many ways, but Mike's contributions go on over almost 20 years to this college, and he's not an alum, but he fell in love with this place, and originally came to know Joe Platt, the founder of the college, and joined the board, I think, at Joe's beckoning, as did a lot, but he came in, and over his tenure, we have, we've seen the, the Hawk Shanahan Dining Hall come into play, presided over, uh, was chair of the Board of Tr Trustees during the time Maria was brought to the college, the start of the strategic plan and many of the things that, that you see here today. And, and most of all is, is probably the most influential in terms of being the real uh, both leadership and financial catalyst behind what we've been able to do in the last 20 years and what you see here today. So there's, there's absolutely no question that this is, is the, the person that we're here to thank and in a lot more ways than just the building. So thank you so much, Mike. There are many other donors here today, and I think if you're, the recognition is around, and if you need help finding your name, there are warts, there are little plaques, there are rooms, thanks to all of you. And I'd also like to thank the faculty and staff and along the way the students that engaged in the planning process and bringing this to being. And I'll, and I'll say I walked around on Friday and I was a student here in Thomas Garrett, which was uh, here, resembled that building real closely. <laughs> and, and, uh, when I wa and you never knew where the teaching was going on. You, you couldn't find it, but you walk around this building and you can look in every classroom. It's, a re there, it's very flexible, they're arranged differently, all these styles, and it's very interesting. You can just spy. I don't understand what's on the blackboard anymore. I've forgotten all that, or it's not a blackboard. It could be a whiteboard or overhead or whatever. There's a million different things in here, but uh, it's, really, uh, it's really a part. that They're the ones that are gonna make this work. Uh, this is the site of Thomas Garrett Hall, as I mentioned, and we memorialized that, and you're sitting in the Thomas Garrett Plaza. Uh, I'd also like to say, on a personal note, uh, I'm a construction guy, That's, I build stuff, and so when I joined the board, I, I looked at, at Thomas uh, Garrett and I said, you know, I think we, uh, we can dignify the teaching here with a little better space, and, and we actually need to for the future. And so I, I helped to start the process to make this, this building happen. But the comment that, I, I, and I'm gonna borrow this from our architect, John Meadows at Bora. When we interviewed architects, I had a little question that I told everybody was my test. And I asked the architects, what defines success in the project? And I had a bet with the selection committee that at least one of them would say, we'll get a design award together. And so we started interviewing and I, I kept waiting for it, you know, like we're all gonna get this design award, which I thought was a dumb answer, but I, I thought they would say it anyway. <laughs> And sure enough, about the third one came up with it. But when we asked uh, Bora, John, John said, success is one year after it's built, this will be the place where people want to be. And I think, it hasn't taken a year, John, I think it's a week. <laughs> and this is the place where people want to be. So I think that can only get better and, and that prediction is a great standard for us all. I'd also like to uh, welcome Cindy Lewis, wife Malcolm Lewis who passed away a uh, year and a half ago. Uh, Malcolm was the chair of the board uh, as we got this thing going, and he had a great uh, passion for environmental design and improving the environment in construction and uh, building projects. And so uh, I think he was the longest, uh, he was our first alumni trustee, and I, I, I won't get into the exact numbers, but over 20 years of being a trustee, and nobody was more de devoted to the school, or more of a gentleman and a great representative of what Harvey Mudd is about. So one of these, his involvement uh, was to uh, uh, request that this be a good standard for environmental design, and 
this building has earned the Leeds Gold Standard, and I have a <laughs> it usually takes a year to get that, but uh, we have Rick Fredrizi here from the Green uh, Building uh, Leeds certification deal with a plaque. So, would you come up, please? Actually. Rick uh, is my boss at USGBC, uh, who de deeply wanted to be here, had a family commitment, his daughter is getting married this weekend, so he wasn't able to make it. Uh, but I, I think that uh, it's, it's fair to say that, that this plaque and everything that it has come to represent would not, not exist if it wasn't for Malcolm. So it really was our pleasure to expedite this so that we could celebrate both the, the, great, the great work that, that Mr. and Mr. Shanahan have, have given, as well as uh, the legacy that Malcolm has, has left for the school. So thanks very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Yes. Now I'd like to ask Jeff Groves to come to the podium. Jeff is Vice President for Academic Affairs, the Shanahan Endowed Dean of Faculty Chair and Professor of Literature. And I'm delighted to be here today to represent the faculty and the staff uh, at this uh, wonderful dedication. I, I spend a lot of time these days in an office on the fourth floor of the Sprague building, probably the only corner office I'll ever occupy. And looking out of my windows to the south, the view is made up mostly of rooftops and the exhaust ducts of Jacob's Keck, which have a, a kind of severe beauty in an, in an industrial sense, but they're not finally all that captivating. <laughs> the view to the east, however, is a stunner. I look straight down our great mall, with its familiar buildings and trees, with our students moving back and forth to the rhythm of the day. But now I also look directly at the new and striking feature on that mall, the Shanahan Center. After this beautiful new building opened this past summer, it has been a huge pleasure to watch from my window as the traffic patterns changed on the mall, with students and faculty members finding their way up the steps from the Libra complex, or down the mall from Hoke Shanahan, or up the slope toward those amazing oak trees that anchor the north face of the building. I've been able to witness the life of the college changing, shifting towards this welcoming destination where the members of our community embrace the large, bright classrooms, the roof gardens, the new writing center, the gallery filled with spectacular art, the recital hall that will soon host our own music series. I've seen community forming in new ways in the Thomas Garrett Plaza, where we are now, outside the cafe, after the lecture, in the auditorium. From my perch, the Shanahan Center is a transformative and inspiring addition to our campus. It's fitting that this building is affecting our community, our patterns of behavior, since its inception involved a great deal of community effort. In early architectural charrettes, in later design reviews, in board meetings, in faculty meetings and open forums, trustees, faculty members, staff, and students work to shape the purposes, the design, the interactions between this novel structure and the rest of the college. The result is both a practical and symbolic structure that we can be deeply proud of, a design that renders in concrete, glass, and steel shingle our pedagogies, our mission, our interactions with the world. On behalf of the faculty, on behalf of the staff, I'd like to thank Mike and Mary Shanahan for this generous gift, this wonderful new space for our community. Thank you. Now I'd like to welcome Travis Atheges, president of Ashmark. Good afternoon, everyone. 
First of all, it's truly a privilege to be addressing the whole MUD community on behalf of the student body. Three years ago, around this time, I remember attending a meeting with President Clave about the construction of a new building on campus. After getting over the initial intimidation, when President Clave, a world-renowned computer scientist and president of the most awesome college on earth, decided to talk to me, an intimidated and anxious freshman, I finally began to get excited about the new building and all the new space it would provide the student body. I remember the day we said goodbye to Thomas Garrett and welcomed the giant fenced-in construction site, as well as the day we welcomed two large cranes to campus and couldn't help but take our eyes off them. If there's one thing the construction process taught me, it's that mutters really like cranes. <laughs> as construction continued last year, I remember standing in excitement as a building that used to just be images on a poster began to take shape before my very eyes. The students became excited about the new building, wondering how the new space would affect the community, wondering how it would look, and perhaps the biggest question of all, wondering if it would have wards. <laughs> all of this leads me up to the end of my fall semester junior year, when I said goodbye to the MUD campus for a semester abroad. At that point, the building was just a bunch of steel beams, concrete, and wires, and the spot where I'm speaking today was just an open trench. So you can imagine my surprise when I came back in September and saw this beautiful new building where we're all gathered today. The flexible classroom space, the beautiful auditoriums, and the new student meeting areas, such as AE, the Writing Center, and the Cafe, have really defined a new center of campus, one where students and faculty alike can collaborate, teach, learn, perform, and relax, and sometimes, you know, do homework. <laughs> Over the past four weeks, I've really seen the MUD community warm up to the new building, and we've christened the new building in a way that is uniquely MUD. As part of the traditional fresh run, for those of you who don't know, Frost Run is uh, an event during orientation where all the freshmen are woken up at about 2 a.m., made to run around campus and pull some sort of prank. Well, as part of this traditional Frost Run, the class of 2017 pulled the first prank on the new building, the installation of paper wards. And with that, it was finally part of the MUD community. <laughs> Even though this building is new, it still maintains that atmosphere that makes MUD unique. Every morning, it's such a pleasure to walk by familiar faces seated at the cafe on my way to class, or to say hi to my fellow mutters as we pass each other in the hallways. Although this new building is bigger than many of the other buildings on campus, it still maintains that small community feel that truly distinguishes the MUD experience. Over the past two years, this building has grown on campus, but now it's time for the MUD community to begin to grow on it. I've seen this starting to happen, but I know there is still so much more to explore and I'm very excited to see where the next years will take us. As I said before, three years ago around this time, I was sitting in a meeting with President Clave, intimidated and anxious. Today, I'm not as intimidated, but I still am anxious, but not because I'm a scared and nervous frosh, but rather I'm anxious to see what this building will mean and how it will affect the MUD community. And on behalf of the student body, I would like to thank um, the Shanahans for giving us this wonderful new building. Thank you. Sir. We're pr privileged today to have in our presence the mayor of the city of Claremont, Apanya Nasiali, and I'd like to invite him to the podium now along with Maria. Mr. Chairman of the Board, Board of Trustees, and especially the Shanahans, President Clawe, I'm glad there is someone else with a name that is difficult to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, uh, very pleased to be here today. It just seems like yesterday when we were doing groundbreaking for this building, and so it's a pleasure to see it now standing here ready to be serving all the students and all the community members. It's one of the few things that I do that are pleasurable as mayor of the city, so. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I'm glad to be here today on behalf of the city of Claremont to congratulate Harvey Mudd College on the dedication of the R. Michael Shanahan Center for Teaching and Learning. We are proud to have to welcome this premier academic center to the, city, the community of Claremont. And uh, on behalf of the city council and my mayor pro tem, my colleague is sitting right there, Joe Lyons, and the rest of the council signed this certificate of congratulations that I'm going to hand over to the president. And I understand she, she has a premier corner office looking at the mountains. <laughs> One of the privileges of being a president of the college. So it's my pleasure to present this to President Klawe for on behalf of the City Council and the community of Claremont. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you so much. Today, sitting at lunch with Mike and Mary Shanahan, Mike kept on saying, but tell me, does the faculty like the building? And I'm going, yes, they love the building. And then he would say, but do the students like the building? And I would say, yes, the students like the building. And you know, those two questions, they really show you an awful lot about Mike and Mary. They fell in love with Harvey Mudd College, not because we are the fanciest, best known place, but because we are the place that cares more about the education of our students than anything else on the face of the earth. And Mike and Mary deeply believe that that's what an academic institution should do. That faculty should be here because they care about the future lives of the students and what those students will be able to accomplish because of the learning both inside and outside the classroom that happens during the four, or sometimes four and a half, or sometimes even a little bit longer years that they are students at Harvey Mudd College. And I often say, I've been at many other great institutions before, but I've never been one at one that comes anywhere close to being as magnificent and as magical as Harvey Mudd College. And it used to be that I could say that, I used to say, you know, we are a fabulous place, but it's not because of our buildings. <laughs> it's all because of our people. Well, I gotta change that line now. <laughs> because, you know, I've been involved in building academic buildings at uh, several institutions. And I have to tell you, and, and at least one of them was extremely successful. But nothing comes close to what this building does for this community. Every day when I arrive here, I look in at the cafe, first of all. First of all, I look to see who's sitting at the tables that are usually on the Thomas Carrot Plaza and see whether I can recognize them. This is, many of you know, my favorite thing is to try and recognize all the students at Harvey Med College. And I never can quite do that, but I can usually do about half. And so I look at those students, and then if I'm not too late for my first meeting, I go get a grande latte in the cafe and talk to the students and faculty and staff who are there. And then I walk and I go up the stairs to my magnificent office. But along the way, I might get to sort of saunter past a few classes and look in, and sometimes I understand what's on the blackboard or whiteboard, and sometimes I don't. And of course, on the way, I went by admissions and financial aid and waved at them as well, and hopefully managed to catch a prospective student or parent or two and say, this is the best place on the face of the earth if you love undergraduate science, engineering, mathematics, humanities, social sciences, and the arts, want to work like crazy, have a great sense of humor. Our students really do work harder than students anywhere else. And our faculty work harder than students anywhere else. So Mike and Mary, you could not have given us a better gift for this campus. You could not have done a better job of setting 
the course for our future because you have given us a set of spaces for learning to occur, a set of spaces for teaching to occur, and a set of spaces that inspire us every single day. And before I close, I want to recognize the fact that there are a ton of people who lost an awful lot of sleep over the last couple of years on this building. I particularly want to call out the people who actually worked on this building, particularly Andrew Durantes and his staff, The chair of the board, Wayne Drinkward, and I can tell you there's no better way to build a building than have a board chair who runs a construction company. <laughs> it is a huge advantage. I also want to call out Bruce Wooster. Bruce, where are you? There he is. Okay, Bruce was the person who really raised the issue that we were going to need a little tiny little bit of debt to actually build this building. Let's say $15 million. And you know, bringing our board to support the idea of using debt, that just is not something we have really done in the past. And you know, frankly, we could not have built this building without Bruce's leadership of being willing to call up the then board chair, Bill Minks, and say, Bill, I think maybe we need to start socializing the idea of debt with our board. This is an amazing space. It is home to an amazing community and it will produce an amazing set of alumni who will rival the accomplishments of our current al alumni. It couldn't have been done without faculty, staff, students, alumni, trustees, parents, and just good friends of the college. I feel extraordinarily grateful to absolutely every single person who helped make it possible. It was definitely a very large team effort. It's not the last very large team effort we're about to do. We are launching the public phase of our campaign in a few months and hope to see you all back here for that. What I can promise you is Harry Mudd College is not only the best undergraduate science and engineering and mathematics education on the face of the earth. It's in the years to come it's going to play an even bigger role around the world in influencing how we improve undergraduate learning at many other institutions. And this building is going to be home to many conferences, to many opportunities for us to bring leaders from around the world to learn from our faculty who are extraordinary and learn from our students and staff who are extraordinary. So Mike and Mary, I love you. I love your love for this college. I love your generosity. I love the faith and trust you have put into our community to continue to be the most amazing college ever, and now one that pretty much everyone is starting to hear of. Thank you. <laughs>